know about what Dr. Ring told me is that they, the idea was brought up in 2009 by the owners, Andrea and Wes Hirsteiner. They were on a 4,000 mile road trip out west and they made it, they quickly made it a goal to um, like stop at every brewery possible just because they liked the uniqueness of each one and like all the games and stuff that came with it. And um, Ordoff opened their doors three days late, or three years later after lots of planning, financial planning, and just like learning about the brewing process itself. Um, the Ordoff strives to not push the doors of like being different as a brewery, but just meeting standards in a unique manner, if that makes sense. Um, they also, one of their missions is where craft brewery and community meet. So they try to sponsor and put on a variety of events. They do Angry Bear Festival. They do the Michigan Ice Climbing Festival. They sponsor a bunch of different um, things that they are passionate about. Uh, so for the situation analysis, uh, they opened 10 years ago this year. So they've been growing all of their processes and their company as needed, uh, that has included distribution abilities. So when they first started, they started as just the one location, just serving the people that went into their company, where now they have four dis different distribution channels that uh, bring their beer downstate to multiple different restaurants as well. Um, and as they continue to grow, there's always a need for improvements. Current improvements that they're making uh, today are as their employee base is growing, they're trying to grow their employee culture as well, make it more feel like a family and like everybody's welcome there. Uh, upcoming improvements, that bottom picture is what they're planning to do in the coming years. They just got a $3.9 million grant approved to uh, open up the upstairs of their space, which you can also see there, as well as developing a whole outdoor area. Uh, some needed improvements are their website. Uh, it is, it works, it functions, it's just not ideal. It's design aspects could be greatly improved as well. Uh, as far as the demographics and everything, when we talked with the owners, their whole deal is they don't want to have a very specific target market. They want to be open to everybody. Uh, so with that being said, their general demographic is 21 plus. Although they are a brewery, they are family friendly up until 10 p.m. So a lot of their events that they offer during the days, you can bring your whole, your whole family in. Uh, locals is their main source of income for sure throughout the whole entire year. And they kind of are more so like a working class target. When you walk in there, there's people that are older, there's people our age as well, but they're all kind of working in some way. It's not a whole bunch of retired people or anything like that. As far as geographics, main part is Marquette as well as close areas in the UP. Uh, and then as I mentioned earlier, all the areas in Lower Michigan that they distribute to Psychographics, a lot of people that go in there are community oriented, active, they want to be outdoors, they like traveling, they like being social. Uh, and that also includes the tourists come summer season especially. And then for competitors, their main ones are Black Rocks and Drippa. Barrel and Beam is also a competitor, but not as direct as they're a different kind of brand themselves. Um, and they actually, the owners told us that when they look at competition, it's not necessarily in a negative way. They use it to kind of see what's going on in the beer community, the industry, all those kinds of things. It helps them spark ideas for what they want to do in the future to continue growing their business. And because they aren't like a huge, huge company, they only have the one location. Uh, it's hard to track everything that's happening in the community, especially with trends. So relying on those other breweries to see what they're doing and what's happening in that whole area is super helpful to them. So to move on to the SWOT analysis, um, the biggest strength for Ordoc is
is that they um, really embrace an inclusive, community-oriented social culture. Um, they have a big focus on the com on the community. Um, in their mission statement, um, they say where craft, beer, and community meet. So they really want to focus on this community aspect. Um, so, so in order to do that, they often collaborate with other local businesses. Um, they just recently um, released some new peers that are in collaboration with local businesses such as um, the fire station. They created um, the official beer for the fire station's can cannabis event that was this past weekend. Um, they also just released um, a beer that was in collaboration with Stormy Cromer, which is um, a local Upper Peninsula based company. Um, they also helped sponsor community events such as um, the, the Michigan Ice Festival, the Hiawatha Music Fest, um, the Orta Shore Race, um, along with a lot of other community events. They're very involved in the, in the community. They also collaborate with local food trucks um, to get some food options outside their brewery. Um, there's multiple nights a week where you can see different food trucks parked outside of there. Um, they offer a variety of live events in their upstairs area. Um, they have a lot of local musicians play. They also host art shows um, and record shows. Um, they offer a lot of games to um, encourage the social environment. Um, they have a, a, a cool table. They also have um, some dart boards and they offer board games as as well to encourage their customers to to socialize and spend a little bit longer in their um, in their in their brewery. Um, another thing that is um, special about Orac is their patio area. They encourage dogs. Um, there is a lot of the Marquette community does have dogs, so. Um, Allowing the dogs to be in the patio brings in um, a lot of customers who, there are some establishments that don't allow dogs, so this allows um, that market to be met as well. Uh, also, they offer um, not alcoholic drink options um, in addition to craft beer, um, such as they have a draft root beer that they make in-house. They also um, offer lemonade sometimes when they have coffee. They also have some non-alcoholic beer options, and they have their own line of hard hard seltzers um, called Breaking Potter. Um, they have a very active online presence, um, especially their Facebook and their Instagram accounts. They have a specific um, social media manager for those accounts, and they post at least two or three times, or they post at least once every two to three days. Uh, they also have very high quality um, images that they use. Um, that is really, um, their accounts are very aesthetically pleasing and um, they really cultivate their brand through their social media. Also, um, they update their website um, pretty frequently. They have like a, a tab that's what's on tap, so they update frequently like which beers they have available. Um, so you can take a look at that before you head in. Um, moving to the weaknesses, they do only have one brewery location. Um, also they only just, they're just, their distributors are only located in the state of, in the state of Michigan. Um, this can also kind of be looked at as a strength because they, they really, um, embrace like the like superior and they take pride in that they're superior source so if they were to move to locations downstate it would be a little off brand for them um, because that's so pretty far from superior so it wouldn't quite be um, superior source anymore also their um, sticking to one location in Marquette shows their love for the town um, and their loyalty to the um, another weakness is that they have a, a pretty small outdoor patio area, um, and as we talked about, they already have plans to expand this patio area, because um, I know um, on nice days when it's really 
because you, the patio fills up really fast. So that can definitely deter customers who are looking for an outdoor um, experience. Um, also, their hub site definitely needs some updating, um, mainly in the in, in the design aspect. Um, it's there is a lot of fonts that are kind of difficult to difficult to read, um, and they can use some a lot of cleaning up um, with the, the organization of Element. Also, there's a couple um, links that lead to like out of date information or events that happened like a year or two ago that could be updated a little bit so it's a little bit more recent. Um, for opportunity, they uh, can continue to follow trends and to stay up to date with what other food preparers are doing, um, both in the Marquette community and the country as a whole. Um, also, just further work to embrace Michigan's beer culture um, through continued events and community, other, other community events. Um, and we're gonna talk about some of ways that they can stay up to trend in the next couple slides as well. Um, also, they can work to grow their employee culture. As the business grows, they're getting more and more employees. Um, so they can work to kind of build um, that employee culture as like a family. Also, I noticed on their website, they don't have any photos of the employees or even the owners. So I think it would be helpful to have a tab on their website where maybe they introduce the employees, especially the owners have a picture of them so customers can get, get familiar with the staff um, and they're able to engage with them more and introduce and um, address them by their names. Um, and that would encourage more interaction between the employees and the customers. Um, threats. There are a handful of other local breweries um, in, in Marquette, such as Black Rocks, Whiskey Fair and Bean, and Trufa. But as we said, um, they embrace these competitors. They don't look at them as competitors, and they embrace them as part of the beer culture, um, and they try to work, work with them. I know they just recently worked with Fair and Bean on releasing a collaborative beer together. Um, also, the COVID-19 social res restrictions, um, they had a big effect on the business. They had to close the upstairs, upstairs area for over a year, um, and they weren't uh, able to have those events that um, really make them um, stand out. Um, so those restrictions definitely um, had an impact, and who knows if they are going to, to reappear at some point. Um, and at, when we talked with the owner, she said that the, those, uh, when COVID happened, that really made them more aware of their online presence, and they were able to work harder on um, updating their website more, posting more on social media um, to get people to um, still be involved in, in the business, even though they weren't having those events. Um, so moving on to digital marketing objectives. Um, so we came up with some um, fun ideas to encourage their um, inclusivity and they, they really want to focus on um, having, a, like you said, a broad target market. They don't want to target just specifically those who enjoy craft beer. They want to kind of um, open that up. So we thought having um, a personalized quiz to help customers um, choose a beer flavor or try something new. Um, would help encourage people who aren't as comfortable going to a brewery, looking at a menu and picking something out. Um, it would make it a lot more easier for them because it would um, be kind of a fun quiz that would give them questions such as, um, are you introverted or extroverted? Do you like cats or dogs? Do you prefer, prefer something strong or subtle? And then it would compile all these um, answers and recommend um, a beer that they would probably like, and then they um, would it be they would be able to show um, a, a QR code, and um, then they could easily pick out a beer without having to just pick something off the menu um, that they're not sure what if they would like or not if they're very if they're not if they're not familiar with um, craft beers. Um, next, we thought we could do some sort of like March Madness tournament, but 
instead we could include the community and be like or include like local artists and let them help design a new beer can and like develop a new beer in general and then that way the community can vote on it and it would be set up like a March Madness bracket and each week we would vote out ones that weren't as popular. Um, this way it's just great for community involvement and showcasing local talent and Mark Jack goes crazy for ways to be involved and that's something that we're not specialized in. So before I jump into the primary and secondary target um, segmentation strategy, I first kind of wanted to discuss the marketing um, target audience decisions and kind of how the ORDOC makes these decisions for the company. So first of all, the ORDOC has a limited um, audience segmentation. And what I mean by that is they pride themselves on being fully inclusive and don't, don't target towards any one audience. Um, the culture of Marquette, the culture of the ORDOC aligns with Marquette and the UP in general. Um, and that is to you know, lead a simple and humble lifestyle while applying natural, clean, and spiritual livability into each aspect of life. Um, the Marquette and UP are also split into different subcultures, and one of the biggest subcultures is social drinkers. So the Ordoc really wants to be that place where anyone can go visit the local brewery and, and emphasize their goal to um, craft beer and help craft a great community. So now that we've kind of talked about um, how they make these marketing tactic decisions, now we can kind of discuss the primary target audience, which, audience, which is going to be your avid craft beer drinkers and brewery goers. And what I mean by that is there's a whole community of people that just love travel and buy new breweries and try new beers. So to justify this segmentation strategy, um, these people are going to be um, determined under the lifestyle and behavioral segmentation strategies. Um, these people are going to be a little bit more willing to pay more for better beer with better flavor. Um, these people tend to care where their food and drink are sourced from. Um, these individuals commonly like to um, support um, smaller local businesses in the community, and then lastly, they just appreciate the art of brewing beer and all the work that goes into it. So lastly, the secondary um, target audience um, is going to be that larger group of consumers. And um, the ORDOC really tries not to target towards any specific demographic, so they try to track trends throughout the whole brewing community and not just Marquette, and then they focus on trying to be that fun and inclusive place um, where everyone and anyone can enjoy. Um, they even offer those non-alcoholic options for people that might not drink or 